The tournament is where Cinderella stories begin and big wins happen on the biggest stage. With Gambat DC, you could make your Cinderella story a reality. Take advantage of new player bonuses online and in app or play in person for boosted parlays. You can bet on all 63 games, even if your bracket's busted, and play from the edge of your seat with exciting in-game bets. Make your bets now with Gambet DC. Terms and conditions apply. Please play responsibly. Hey, guys. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain. Anchor has the tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. And trust me, guys, it works. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And the best of all, it is totally free. Yes, totally free. So download the Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back to the Brook Boy Podcast. I'm your host, Marco Martinez. How's it going, everybody? I'm, this episode, I'm actually going to be by myself. Right now, my girlfriend is working. So I decided just to, you know, just to record an episode by myself. It's currently Thursday. Thursday around, like, what, 12-19, 12-20? And, you know, my, my plan is to at least do... Two episodes a week now, uh, maybe every Monday and Thursdays, maybe, maybe two Tuesdays, Thursdays. Not too sure. Thinking maybe to pre-record some or just do some like right now, where I'm recording one right now, and I'm just gonna go ahead, maybe do a few little edits and tweaks, and then upload it. But anywho, it's got a lot of stuff on my mind right now and so i was thinking today's episode we could probably talk about you know maybe just some mental health well just well, first things first is mental health is really fucky let's just say that it's the disease of the brain is just scary in a way i guess is what you can say you just, you just never know what can happen, you know. Just it's just very, it's very unpredictable, and there's just been treatments. You know, getting ther- you know, having a therapist can help. Having those people around you, people that love you, people that are willing to listen, can help you out really much. But you know, even then, mental health is just one of those things that we just don't know how to fix it. We just don't know any treatments. Which is a scary part. It's not you can just not like you can just go to the doctors, tell them what's going on, and then they'll you know, recommend you a therapist of sometimes their choice, maybe just of whatever fits you. And sometimes to some people, if it's if they just been having such a fucky, you know, just fucky weeks, a therapist isn't. It, that's not one of their options. Because me, I don't really like to speak my mind. I don't really like to take out a lot of my emotions, I guess you can say. And so, with me, I feel like I do need a therapist to talk to. But, you know, not only are they expensive, like, can be very expensive. You know, maybe they can help me, you know, maybe change up some routines here and there. But... Sometimes it's, I don't know, maybe sometimes I don't, maybe, sometimes I just think I don't, just don't want a therapist. Like, obviously anyone needs, everyone needs a therapist. Maybe I do too, but, you know, at the moment, obviously I don't have that type of money just to be going to talk to a therapist. I tried doing this one thing where I've seen all over YouTube, heard all over uh, other podcasts, and that's uh, BetterHelp. Uh, it's like an app for both. It's available on the App Store and Google Play Store, but even that one's pretty expensive too. Things like fifty bucks a week, and they charge you for the four for the f- about four weeks, which is the month. So instead of it being 
the let's say 50 bucks that you might think per week in turn it's like about what 200 bucks for the month that they'll charge you granted they it is everything everything is online you can send text message they're available 24 7 you can call facetime do all that fun stuff that you need to do um which honestly i thought you know it'd be more better than therapy like actually going to a section because some because isn't it like about an hour i think per section and even then you have to schedule and so when you you know just need to talk to someone i guess you can say immediately scheduling doesn't really help because it can just seem like a necessity like it's a um, like work it's just you have a schedule and you need to go you need to go get, uh, schedule an appointment but by then maybe whatever you were dealing with at the time maybe isn't just that relevant anymore or you just at that time you needed someone to talk to but now you don't and well I'm not saying therapists are bad me and my brother he's one psychology he got his uh, degree he both uh, bachelor's and a master's in clinical mental health studies and whatnot so very proud of him on that and I'm currently doing real estate classes almost done just waiting for the uh, I guess it's a state patrol for the whole criminal background check and then after that and while that's going on and I do my classes well I am doing my classes almost done like I said finish those classes then once they give me the okay then I'll get another email of when I can go in and uh, set up a uh, time time and day for my exam and you know, passing my exam will make me a licensed real estate agent and then I'll I'll I can then like how to say help clients buy and sell houses and I won't reveal where I'd be going but you might see it on Facebook because you know I'll be they always like to post everywhere so yeah, I'll be sharing it so stay tuned for that my girlfriend, she's going for uh, human services, if I'm not mistaken. And you know, I wish her the best luck. She's doing very well. She always says she doesn't, she's not doing very well, but she is, and really proud, really proud of her for for going with it, for doing really well, even through the struggles. Very proud of her for doing it. I mean, really, I've been very proud of everyone that I have seen all over. Uh, Know, social media all over Facebook, Instagram, all of their successes. You know, even the ones who decided not to go to college or leave college early and are doing their own things. You know, wish them the very best of luck because you know college isn't for everyone. And I realized college wasn't for me. You know, I graduated high school with a three point seventy six, I believe, three point seventy five or three point seventy six GPA. I was second in my class. Granted, there was only 14. Um, and then the first in class, you know, for I guess you can say for privacy purposes, I won't specify her name. However, she did beat me by, I believe, like 0.01 or 0.02 GPA. So we were really neck on neck. And even to this day, I'm like, dang. I've If I at least did better in my English, I feel like... I could have beaten her by that .01 GPA. But, you know, I wasn't the best at English or reading, as you can probably tell by my uh, ACT. I mean, even though I got a 21, my reading in English wasn't the highest. But you know, I was more of a math guy. Got a 26 on it. I've got a 21, I think, on my science. But, I mean, it is what it is. So I hope here in real estate I do really well on top of the podcast and YouTube. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, again, wish everyone the best of luck. And I hope to you know, see people do what they want to do in their lives, succeed it. You know, any one of my peers, the uh, old peers, all my high school peeps, 
I know I said peeps, sound like an old guy, but hey. So I see them do really well. I've seen some with uh, the whole uh, like um, like nursing area, uh, radiology area. Um, I think that's most of it. More like in the nurse, more in the medical area, I believe what I've just been seeing. Uh, good luck to them. Been proud of them from day one. So hope soon go do some big things. But back to the whole mental, you know, f- fuck what I just said back there because huh, I guess you could say got kind of got off topic. But uh, m- mental health, when you start seeing early signs of it, try to try to get someone to talk with, you know, get some, you know, even if it's your parents, maybe a friend. Hell, maybe a coworker. Maybe you have that manager that's willing to listen, or that one coworker that's willing to listen. You know, try to get their phone number, talk, call them. You know, or if maybe even during on the job, maybe during work on break. You know, if you really need someone to talk to, talk with them. You know, just tell them what's on your mind, tell them what you're feeling, and just talking to someone can could really help. Because once it really gets to you, like mentally, once it's one of those big stages, that's where it can be very fucky. It's like with me, with my weight, it still gets to me. I mean, I've <laughs> basically I gained back what I lost, I'm trying to get back on to the whole dieting thing. Because that body image, I just don't like seeing how I look with my body. I mean, that's been a constant struggle like that since I've been young. I mean, I've been a big kid since I've been a little baby. I look like a little grape. A little little white grape, what you call me. I'm also short because, you know, got the jeans. believe that part from my mom. My mom's pretty short. My dad isn't the tallest, but he's like average height. I think he's probably, I'm 5'5", so he could be maybe 5'7". Maybe five six, five seven. Um, my mom, I believe she's like five four, five three and a half. My brother's around there, so that's where you know, fat and short, looking like a grape. My jeans, um, my height, I don't really mind, but it's like I said, it's more my, more my body. You know, sometimes it can be really hard, especially, you know, you're at work. And you know, it's just been a really busy day. I mean, uh, uh, ever since close to the beginning of the year, I think around like March, April, I made a pledge to myself to stop drinking soda completely, entirely. Yeah, I have these ones called like Zevia. It's, those are the only types that I'll drink because I guess you can consider it soda, but a much healthier alternative because it's not, I don't have to deal with all these crazy sugar that's in there. All these carbs, it's literally zero calories. It with very, very few ingredients. Like right now I have the creamy root beer. I'll grab one and tell you the nutritional facts. Uh, like I said, zero calories, zero fat, zero sodium, zero, zero milligrams of sodium, zero carbs, zero sugars, zero protein. The only ingredients is carbonated water, stevia leaf extract, natural flavors, which Honestly, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and citric acid, based off in LA. Yes, it can be a little bit expensive. I mean, the the eight pack that I have there costed about it was on sale for about I think six ninety nine at Target, and then they had a deal going on to where you get ten percent off. So I got it for about like six thirty nine, I believe. Um, and that's actually really, really ha- has helped me with my soda cravings. Like, very helped me. And honestly, their flavors are really good. And ever since then, I haven't really gone back to soda. And that's, I guess you can say, one goal that I've really liked. But when it comes to fast food, that can be a very hard one. Or, like, snacking in general. Um, like I said, at work, you could... Because since I work in retail, you can, you know, be done, go to break, and or you're hungry. And let's say you've already had enough water to drink. And so you just don't want, maybe you just don't want water. You want to go get yourself like a like a Gatorade or something. Or maybe you are okay with water and you just want to 
snack on some chips, snack on some, like some meat sticks, you know, just get some stuff that's, that you're snacking on. And during that time, you can think, uh, that's just a snack, but then it can build on because then you snack during your breaks. And then when it's your lunch time, your lunch break, then you eat a meal on there. And if you, once you're doing the regular five days a week, 40 hours a week, that can build, that can take a toll on you where you, know, you can start building that type of habit. And then here you are on your days off where you're hungry. Um, let's say when you wake up, you're starving. And because your body's so used around that time to maybe have started snacking on something, then there you are wanting to snack on stuff. And most of the time, since you snack on chips, anything to do with a lot of fat, a lot of sodium, a lot of cholesterol, whatever the case may be, that's what your body wants. That's what your body craves. And then here you are getting hungry a lot during the day um, because you're just so used to, I guess you can say, um, snacking, could be snacking um, one to two times a day during work, during your eight hours, and then plus your meal. Then after that, your dinner, depending how early or late, it could be your dinner that you still your other meal but then on your days off you know here you are you want to enjoy you want to relax so you don't do anything you can just be chilling in bed sitting on the couch all day Um, you're not doing anything you decide to go make some other stuff like milkshakes you want to eat ice cream you want to or go get some mcdonald's you want to just start eating all that and then you just creates that bad habit and then a month or two later um you start trying to go to work you know you it's your day off you go it's the next day you're out you're gonna go to work and then you you try putting on that shirt or those jeans and you realize oh shoot this is starting to be tighter than what it was last time than what than what i was used to and then that just starts taking a big mental toll that just starts you just then start thinking all these negative thoughts about yourself you start looking at yourself much differently but just here to tell you that love yourself No matter what you see, love yourself because when you don't, that's going to be the most fucked up thing, what you'll do to yourself when you don't love yourself because what I've seen a lot of people do, um, and I guess you can say it's environmental, but like vaping, it's to the point where I see more vaping than smoking cigarettes. If you're not smoking a cigarette, you're vaping, and at first it was advertises it being the healthy alternative now it's at the, but it's because it wasn't studied correctly now it's you have people basically having this almost having the same effects as cigarettes they're they're not able to, you can tell it by their voice they're starting to get choppy starting to get scratchy starting to get rough all this other fun stuff some vapes are exploding in people's hands causing severe like some very severe burns like you you're just inhaling I don't want to say acid, but just artificial chemicals. I mean, I know it's just, that's how it is with like foods, with chips and whatnot. You're e- you're eating artificial chemicals. Same with vaping. You're inhaling artificial chemicals. Hell, some of them contain like a- like what what is it, like acetone or not acetone? Um, like propane. I've seen some. Like it's just it's scary what people are doing to their bodies. You know, doing that type of damage. But it's only they only do it because their friend did it. They saw it was cool, or they see everyone else doing it, so they want to do it. And so at the time right now, it's fine. But just wait three to five years later, and it's gonna take a toll. It, they'll start having they'll they'll start struggling to breathe, and they'll start coughing a lot. It's just like a cigarette. Um, or people will start, I you know, just mistreating their body. You know, I guess that's part of the whole mistreating. You know, just love yourself like like please like just love yourself fuck what other people think and i know that could be very very hard to some people where it's just that constant anxiety of of you know let's say again you go to work and you're and let's say your jeans are starting to fit tight let's say you can feel the shirt fit a little bit tighter but the jeans are more noticeable. Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe your jeans you can feel getting a little bit tighter, but it's not uncomfortable. Sometimes you can feel actually a little bit better. But let's say it's the shirt. 
you look in the mirror and you're starting to see the shirt a little bit tighter and then it's, and then you start seeing the insecurities come out and then when you're at work you get you get anxious because then you start thinking people are going to start talking about you you think people are talking about you and really they're just telling you hey get on the fucking registers we're busy or whatever and then that can just take a big mental toll on people which is scary because then that can lead to depression and other stuff that can be very sad and not only that, um, it's like the societal standards. Like, um, um, again, I'll bring back with the whole college thing. Some people go to college, not just not because they're motivated to go to college, because they want to, because they're that passionate of being a dentist, a teacher, a doctor, an engineer, whatever the case may be. It's not that. It's it's a societal standard. They see. They hear everywhere, go to college, go to college, go to college. That's the only way you're going to be successful in life. Go to college, go to college. The parents will tell them, go to college, go to college. Because some, some of those people, uh, parents went to college and let's say went did really well. Perfect. Or um, the parents who didn't have a great life and so they tell the kids, go to college. And a lot of the times, you know, they think, they think that's what they should do. They get to college maybe do well their first two years but then at the time go on they realize you know what i actually don't like this anymore but let's say whatever it is a teacher a nurse whatever they realize you know you had that drive you had that motivation in the beginning but then you start realizing it as the time goes on of you know do i really want to keep do i really want to do this this is like it doesn't interest you anymore and it's and to some people they drop out because they just couldn't do it anymore. Because, again, their mental health. And the scary part is some schools, they could advertise all this whole mental health awareness, all this fun stuff. And I know schools can only do so much. They can only have so much resources. However, sometimes when it comes up to the professors, that can be the scary part. Because if you need, like, don't be afraid to be taking mental days. That's the problem. Is people think that you need to keep going, keep going, keep going to impress others. It's but stop and stop trying to impress others. You're trying to impress yourself, not others. So when you need that mental day, take that mental day, because you'll realize that whatever you're trying to do to impress others, they don't give a shit. And if they do, fuck them. Fuck what. Fuck with do you have fans? Fuck with they. Fuck that they keep trying to look at your life to see what you're doing. That just means they're interested in you. Don't try to impress no one else. Don't like, you can flex like once you know you're doing well. You want to flex on them, flex on them, but don't try to do it to impress them. Don't try to go broke to impress people, because I've seen people when I was younger flex their new truck, their new 2020 truck, their two new 2019 truck. Because let's just say the Panhandle is infamous for <laughs> a lot of people buying trucks. It's it's Ye County over there, and now, especially with the whole inflation, here they are having struggling to now pay that truck because their their twenty hour a, a job that they were doing very well back then. Um, let's say now they're only getting paid twenty two, but since everything's gone up, has been such so much more expensive. Here they now are struggling to pay it. And it's like, you know, you, it's like, did you really, did you do it to flex and to, to look like you're doing good? Or did you just do it to, to impress others to say, yeah, look at me, I got a new truck, but in real, but, in, but then realistically it's, if the, tr- if the vehicle is worth more than what you make in the year, don't buy it. Like, please don't buy it because if you're making 40,000 a year and that vehicle costs 50 K don't do it because you might think, ah, payments are like, let's say $300 a month, 400 and you make twelve, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 every two weeks. So about, let's just say about $2,500 a month. And you might just think, ah, I'll do it because I can afford it. No, because once the hard times come and that note is coming and you only have 93 bucks in your account 
and payment is due in two days and you don't get paid till that next week but then on top of that you have your phone bill and all these other stuff it's like you know what was getting that truck worth it because starting the show it wasn't um so don't try to impress people please <laughs> um and with with and well, with all that well just please take care of yourself like i love you we all love you everyone loves you and people don't that don't love you fuck them keep saying that a lot fuck them because they're a piece of shit if they don't love you because fuck them they have their own insecurities that they're afraid to talk about so they want to point the fingers at you so fuck them sorry for my cousin just speaking french but back to reality um, it's also kind of sad to see people um kind of use their depression well they'll say they have they're depressed they weren't diagnosed but they'll say they're depressed and and i'm not trying to hate on anyone i'm not trying to say oh you have fake depression i don't support people who have depression blah 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 i'm not saying that it's just some people kind of use that for granted they'll say oh yeah i'm i'm depressed so that's so i don't want to go to work today and it's uh, just to me, I'm not saying they are depressed. Just to me, it's you don't just tell if you are truly depressed. You just are truly in a very dark place. You don't just start wailing it out. Just telling people, "Oh yeah, I'm depressed. I'm not going to work tomorrow. I don't want to go to work. I'm I'm depressed." It's like that's can be sometimes an insult to people who are because they're like, "Oh well, like I'm I'm only coming because some people can't." live alone no i would say like yeah i guess you can say that like live alone can't can't be alone so that's the only reason why they're at work it's because it gets them gets them out of their mind sometimes and then because then when they're off they can be tired relax but a lot of people but you know those type of people that say oh i'm depressed oh that you won't go to work it's like no like don't don't be trying to use that because because you can't just say you're depressed at and you don't want to go to work, and then, um, and then here you are just scrolling through Twitter or playing Smash Bros. or some shit, you know, Warzone or something. Like, I'm not saying they're, I'm not saying they're depressed. It's just don't use that for granted, and don't try to just say it out loud, just because to some people they are too afraid to say it out loud, and they're just kind of, and those type of people that just want to wail it out. Um, they probably don't really know how that feels, or you know, just maybe just been through that deep of a gutter that at that point they just can't really do anything. But other than all my talking, I mean, just need to get some stuff out of my head. There's some stuff has been, I don't want to say just going on, just just been flowing through my mind. I mean. I have my own demons I'm struggling with. Everyone has their own demons that they're struggling with. I just hope to, hope one day that I can get out of it. Just like all of you guys, hope everyone else can get out of it too. I will in the description. I will put the phone number to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. I believe they did change it. It's not the one eight hundred number anymore. I think it's just nine eight eight. I don't know if it's star 988 or just 988, which is amazing. Now you don't have to type a long number. You'll have that number, that, that quick, easy number that you'd be able to just type. Well, dial, I guess you can say. But yeah, I'll put that, I'll link that in the description. Um, other than that, I'll see you guys next Monday. I'll you know, see what else I can try to talk to. I'll try to see if I can bring any other guests just so you guys don't have to keep hearing me talk and just and then get bored because, you know, I, I can be a boring guy. I can talk a lot. Um, but you know, make sure if you like it, subscribe to the Broke Boy podcast. I'll put the link. I'll just put a link tree link in the description where it takes you to all the socials. I have um, an actual Broke Boy podcast um, official Instagram 
my page, Facebook page as well. So make sure to click that, visit that. That's where I'll try to post maybe some daily updates, maybe. Um, or just telling you about an upcoming episode. Or post the episodes on there. But, yeah, my girlfriend right now, I love her. It's working. Everyone else out there, I love you guys. And again, see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.